Hey, so before we start this on Corkane, I want to let you all know that this was originally filmed back in November of 2019. Now, this is way before we started doing our Best Bourbons of 2019 contention. I want to let you all know that because, well, honestly, we didn't even know if this episode was ever going to come out. We knew that we liked this bourbon because one of our patrons, Andrew, had let us try a little bit of it, but that was after having other bourbons, so we hadn't actually sat down with our own bottle with a clean slate and tried it out. But we hate opening bottles without having the camera rolling just in case something special does happen. Then the best bourbon of 2019 episode happened, and spoilers if you haven't seen it, but it turned out to be our, by far, our favorite bourbon of 2019. Wanted to kind of preface that because we do ooh and ah about this a lot, and, and I, I could just see some people being like, wow, there uh, is this a sponsored video? Is Heaven Hill paying them? No, we're not. But about that, they did invite us out to uh, their distillery for a press event. This was a couple weeks after we uncorked it because they were showing people their expansion uh, plans for the Bourbon Heritage Center. So while we were there, I thought I had my camera with me. I grabbed one of their experts there and filmed a little piece asking him about William Heaven Hill since we'd had it at that point and we enjoyed it so much. So in the middle of this video, there'll be a little bit information about that. So there you go. Enough of that. Let's start the episode. Roll the intro. It's bourbon night, it's an uncorking. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. Sarah, we have a beautiful limited edition bottle before us. What do we have? We have William Heaven Hill 12 year. Yes, this is the 2019 release. Oh. Look at that purple label. Purple. Ooh, it's pretty. This is barrel proof, Sarah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is 134.4 proof. Oh my. Oh my, I have the vapors. <laughs> I have the, I do declare. Well, I do declare. Well, I never, <gasps> except for I have. <laughs> except for you have, yeah. All right, let's let's uh, let's get this cork off of here. Then we're gonna read you some stuff here on sure. the back. Give you some info. Yeah. But let's crack into this wax. First offhand. We'd like to thank uh, a lucky group of patrons who, well, I mean, I guess we're the lucky ones. Uh, the lucky they ones. joined us uh, a few weekends ago for a Patreon only exclusive Bourbon Night meetup. We called it Here for the Booze Weekend because it was the weekend pre preceding Halloween. And they all pitched in and bought us this bottle on site at Heaven Hill. How nice is that? It would be even nicer if Chad could open it. <laughs> all right. I think I was taking it the wrong way. Success. But it felt like it wanted to go the other way. There we go. Pause for cork pop. Oh, worth it. Okay, so we just poured this. It's a high proof. I, I want to let it open up just a little bit just in the glass. Just a touch. Uh, I wanna... Spin me a tail. What's uh, it called? I'm gonna, I'm gonna spin you a yarn. For William Heaven Hill, distilling was a family tradition. By some accounts, Heaven Hill corn whiskey supplied Bardstown historic Talbot Tavern, we've been there, mm -hmm. in the early 1800s. The limestone spring William used to make his bourbon was the same spring that inspired our company's original name, the old Heaven Hill Spring Distillery. Oh. Knowledge, knowledge is power. This seventh edition of William Heaven Hill is an extremely limited and unique offering. It has been aged for 12 years on the 10th floor of Rick House IK, a brick warehouse located at the historic Bernheim Distillery. Mm. Comprised of only 35 barrels, this small batch results in a finely balanced bourbon with a smooth finish. Bottled at barrel proof and non-chill filtered, it makes the perfect addition to any whiskey connoisseur's collection. Okay, cool. So just all, all, the, all the things we like. Two all thumbs up. All the things we like. Barrel proof, not chill filter. Yay. <laughs> Top of the warehouse. Uh, Interesting. Aged for a, for a good amount of time. So you got to think if it was aged for that long at that, like that many floors up, how much of it was left, right? Is that's probably yeah, what makes it such a limited thing. And only uh, 35 barrels. That's so 35 barrels limited. and what's left of those after 12 years on the 10th floor. Pretty like <gasps> we should also say this was $280 at the distillery. Ooh. I don't remember this being nutty. Now, you know, last oh. time we'd been drinking all, all day we had been. And, and, and so forth. It wasn't a fair uncorking. Luckily, we were on a bus, not driving. You know, we were being driven places. That's responsibility. But it has this- oh, This smells like rich this and creamy. Rich, dried nuttiness. Mm. 
This smells like a bedtime story in a glass. Like, smells like a peanut butter sandwich. It's so nice and soothing. It does not, I would say by the nose, I don't know, 110 proof maybe? <laughs> yeah, it does not come off as 130. Wow. Like usually that can smack you right in the face, in the nose specifically. Um, <laughs> your, and it's not In your doing, olfactories. In your olfactories, it's <laughs> in, not doing in that. In your olfactories. Okay, I wanna drink this. Me too. Whoa. But the taste Whoa. is more like 134 uh -huh. point that for oh it keeps going sarah yeah I and know. it morphs it, it mighty really morphs does. it's a power ranger oh man that maybe, is maybe give us a second i don't yeah. i don't know i'm sorry i need a minute <laughs> it had so many layers and that's just the first taste like i haven't even uncovered anything yet. yeah it was just like wow i'm waiting for it to start creeping down because i know it should be with that proof but it hasn't quite gotten there oh, oh okay it's starting to it's starting to. It's not. It's pretty gentle. For the proof, I also think it's, it's kind of gentle. It's it's handling me with kid gloves right now. It's, yeah. it's being pretty gentle. But man, the the yeah, that uncovering of flavors. It's just like you just think you're done, over. and it's just like yeah, washed over you is the best way I know how to describe that. Not a, not a super super long. Finish, not a though. long finish. Not what I would expect <clears throat> for a one thirty plus. You yeah. know. Um, I would expect for it to hang around a bit longer and maybe it just takes another sip. Um, I'm not getting a major Kentucky hug off of it either. Again, that might be just like a building thing. Yeah. Sometimes these things take time. Um, but those <clears throat> flavors were out of control. <laughs> I mean, like, I honestly, like, I always say, I always joke and I'm like, I'm on a roller coaster ride, but I literally felt like I was on a roller coaster <laughs> of flavor. Like, just the different peaks and valleys of different flavor. I don't know. I just need to taste again. Yes, please. Wow, the nose even it's, it comes off different the second time. <laughs> he didn't know because he just went straight for it. You really got to work it around in your mouth because the proof does show itself. If you like try to chew on this, give it the Kentucky chew. It's mm. so, like, be careful. I'm 134.4 proof. And you got to kind of work it in to keep it from like just... He's absolutely right the more you i know this looks i don't say stupid. swish <laughs> swirl chew whatever you do that sounds like a rhyme um <laughs> put that on a t-shirt yeah you get the it it wakes it up oh, now there now, it is yeah. there but it, it like passed my esophagus and, and went to my, my tongue stomach it just went boom here i am interesting rock you like a hurricane <laughs> okay oh but man is that not a chunky peanut butter yes I see part of that. I'm not getting a whole bunch of like, I could almost give, cause I'm getting a little bit of fruit too. It's, it's I like, could give you like the world's fanciest peanut butter and jelly. It's like someone <laughs> is in the next room eating a peanut, a crunchy peanut butter sandwich and, and, you can like, and they're exhaling. I'll, I'll get on board. Oh man. Okay, come on. Here we go. You know, this kind of reminds me of? What? Booker's 30th. <gasps> oh. Oh, you might be right, but I'm totally getting more of that peanut butter now at the finish. Only at the finish. And only now have I first, and it's not the power of suggestions, don't. It's more of like the texture of peanut butter than it is actual nuttiness. It could I, also I, be like, you could say almond butter or yes, whatever. Yes, almond butter. Almond I butter. Get, I, get a, I think I'm getting a little bit more nuttiness. I mean, it's just because I love nuttiness, but it, it, it feels like you have chewed a actual peanut that's why i said crunchy peanut butter because you kind of have like that aftertaste in, in your mouth yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. i'll tell you what this is not sarah and you might expect this to be it because of the distillery this is not an elijah craig barrel proof no it is not it's not it can maybe see it from the window but it's like it's, it's not in the same building yeah no they're definitely not in the same building there's something so rich and like elegant about this about the way it unfolds i can totally see just based on like the facts that we know about where it was stored how long it was stored how many barrels went into it already make it limited but like the quality of what they get out of that who knew they knew <laughs> i didn't yeah, know knew. um we've had this before <laughs> previous years but like a tiny little taste and i've never gotten to enjoy it like this i totally see <laughs> why it is where it sits on like the price scale, the availability scale. If you asked me 
what my top contender was, what I think needs to be dethroned, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's this for best of 2019. It's for it's, sure in the running. It's now, very hard to call without doing it blind. Yeah, you do it blind and, and things can always blind. change. Now, I wanna, this I wanna... deserves an exceptional mouthfeel. Roll it. Exceptional mouthfeel. I want to keep drinking it, but I know we need I to add some water. Keep drinking I just want to drink it. And that should tell you. I still Oh, wanna... I'm really starting it's to. So... Oh. It is a gentle warmth. It like slowly builds and warms you up rather than just like hitting you in the chest with that, that rough. That, you know, how dudes hug each other when they haven't seen each other in a while. They like grab each other. Boom, boom. Yeah, the bro hug. They hit each other. And that's like sometimes it can be like, oh, it's a Kentucky hug, but it's so aggressive. So we just added five drops of water to these. So we're gonna take a little break, let these mingle in. But before we do... Uh, we'd like to tell you about patreon.com slash it's bourbon night, where you can become a patron of our channel for as little as $1 a month and join in our community and conversation. Uh, the meetup that this came from, uh, we get exclusive, you know, tickets to those on Patreon first, and those don't make it past Patreon. We got uh, first crack at challenge coins, the only place where you get to pick your number. Patreon only podcasts, Patreon only live streams, all kinds of things. Plus, we just get to chat. So that's fun. You can join for $1 a month. I also want to tell you about whiskeyambitions.com. It's where this t-shirt, these glasses, these glasses, these challenge coins all come from. Uh, it's our home on the internet for various things like that. Whiskeyambitions.com. All right, I'll let this sit here for a little bit longer and we will see you very soon. We celebrate William Heaven Hill through our William Heaven Hill line here at the Bourbon Heritage Center. It's a mostly exclusive to uh, the Visitor Center, uh, but we do these as extra age expressions of the craftsmanship of our American whiskeys. Uh, it's, it's typically something that is, has quite a bit of age to it. It's gonna have quite a bit of proof, and we can do it just here because it's not very many barrels. While we may have 1.7 million barrels whiskey of whiskey aging here in Nelson County and Jefferson County, uh, not all of those, particularly as they get older in age, are gonna be quality enough for us to bottle and put as a really, truly unique iteration of our craftsmanship. So we'll do that with William Heaven Hill, where I was saying earlier that the 75 barrels that we did for Parker's Heritage Collection is a very small amount in the grand scheme of things, well, we can do you know a handful of barrels, half dozen, dozen barrels of William Heaven Hill, sell it here just at the Bourbon Heritage Center, and really truly define sort of the, the, the variety that is available through Heaven Hill and show the craftsmanship of three generations of beams, Denny Potter, Connor O'Driscoll's, great people who've been making our whiskey and uh, a great family that we're a part of in the Shapiro family uh, that uh, uh, is, is Heaven Hill Distillery. Okay, and we're back. It's been about 10 minutes. Let's see what these five drops of water have done. Oh, the nose is still amazing. It's, uh, if anything, it's it's sweeter and more like- It's a little more airy. Brulee, yeah. caramel, desserty, oh, delicious. That sounds nice. You're, you're what a description. <laughs> and dang. Ooh. Ooh, I think that water makes, brings the heat out of that. It definitely disturbs <laughs> that that proof and is like, wake up, wake up, be 130 plus proof. Yeah, uh, yeah, One hundred and What was it again? 134.4. It does say be hotter. It's like almost the opposite effect of what you think that water will do. It actually- <laughs> It proofed it down, but it tastes higher Stirred proof. it up, yeah. But aside from that, it does to me taste sweeter, more dessert-like, mm -hmm. more, Mm, yeah, just like toasted caramel yeah. drizzle or something. It's, it's, it's still really good, but I feel like it is lacking a little bit of that magic. That like elegance that it was, is definitely gone down after adding the water. Yeah, which is no wonder why they make it at barrel proof. <laughs> they don't want you to do that. <laughs> um, no, but I mean it's still it, it's, very good. It's as it's, nature intended. It's exactly. <laughs> it's very good um, with the water but I have to say I prefer it without. Agreed. Brass tax time, Sarah. A 200 and mm. I think 80, 70, $80 bottle. Uh, that stings. It does sting. Super Ellie, what say you? Ugh, this is so hard. Um, I mean, I say yes. If it's gonna go on my best of 2019, if I'm saying it's the front runner, how can I say no that I don't recommend it? I can't. But this one comes with all kinds of asterisks and caveats. Like, you're not gonna be able to find it. 
If you can find it, good luck finding it at retail. You'll probably find it at secondary, in which case, like, do you want to pay that? And probably not, because um, I've seen it secondary for $900 up, which is insane. But what's in this bottle is absolutely amazing. I, yeah, I cannot say that I want it to, like, I see it being my front runner of best of 2019 and then say, no, I don't recommend it. I can't do it. But this is a tough one. Like, I can't be like, yeah, go out and buy a bottle. Because you can't. And Even a taste at a bar is going to be like $80. Prim, maybe, probably. Uh, find it find it for a good pour at a bar. If and, they and, even have it at a bar. Treat yourself. If you are a LE collector, if you're jonesing for that William LaRue Weller or George T. Stag this year and miss out and have an opportunity to get this. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Go for it, because you won't be disappointed. This is the level of exceptionalness. Exceptionalness? Exceptionality. Exceptionality? No, I made that up, I think. It's the level of being exceptional that a William the Ruweller uh, usually sits at, or a George T. Stagg. It is for sure an LE of the highest magnitude. Sure. It's delicious, and I have to give it a thumbs up too. Yes. It's, yeah, it's, it's gonna be time. my best of 2019 uh, <sighs> running as well. And yeah, yeah, I don't wanna ever pay that price. The first- No, who wants to? First one of these that I bought, which was about five years ago, was $130. So it just goes to show. But, wow. But wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in a time when there are a million limited editions everywhere, and you really don't know what's what, this is one that like, oh, you're just not gonna go wrong. Like if you would rather gamble $150 on something you've never heard of before or whatever, um, then you can do that or you could spend the, I mean, it's double the money really almost, but you, what's in here is amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So no regrets. <sighs> no no well, regrets. No reg <laughs> regrets for us because it was gifted, but. Correct. Even if I had a chance to go buy another one, I would. But we would, yeah. I would buy another one. Yeah. Mm, okay, cool. Hey, if you're new to the channel and haven't done so already, you can click right up here to subscribe. You can click down here for a suggestion of another video. We'll go ahead and see you over there in that next one. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more bourbon.